A complete overhaul of the magnetos is a job that calls for specialized skill and equipment, and you shouldn't attempt it. Your job here will be to inspect and adjust the breaker points and time the magnetos to the engine, but you won't disassemble the magneto itself. Before removing the magnetos from the engine, you'll have to disconnect the ignition wires from the magneto terminals. Leave the terminals in their outlets. It's a good idea to tag each wire with the number of the terminal it came from. Then when you reconnect them, you'll be sure to connect them to the proper terminal. When you have all the terminals disconnected, the ground wires leading from the magneto to the cabin switch will have to be disconnected also. There's one for each magneto. When you reconnect these ground wires later on, they must be hooked up properly or you'll mix up the designations on the cabin switch. Tag them so you'll be sure to reconnect them right. Now loosen and remove the two hold-down nuts that secure the magneto to the gear case cover. You can then lift the magnetos free of the engine and work on them at the bench. With both magnetos on the bench, remove the breaker cover so you can get at the breaker points. You'll have to cut the safety wire and remove the two cap screws that hold the breaker cover to the housing. The breaker assembly is now exposed where you can inspect it. Your principal job is to see that the breaker contact points are in good condition and that they open at the proper time. It appears that these contacts are pitted and probably should be replaced with new ones. Unless the contacts are in good condition, the spark delivered to the cylinders will be weak. Two screws hold each of the points in place. Remove them and lift the breaker point assemblies out. These screws hold the points in position and allow you to make adjustments. A comparison of the pitted points with a set of new ones shows the difference clearly. If you find pitted points like those on the right, the cause of the pitting ought to be found and corrected. New contact points are always installed in sets, not individually. When you have the new set installed, check to see that the points line up exactly. Notice here that one is higher than the other. You can correct this by loosening the two screws that hold the movable point to the housing. Then move the assembly until the points line up exactly. Now re-tighten the screws. The next thing to do is to adjust the contact points so that they open at the proper time. Put a piece of thin feeler stock between the contact points. Close the points until the feeler stock is held firmly. Pulling slightly on the feeler stock, turn the drive shaft in the direction of normal rotation, often indicated by an arrow on the magneto, and watch through the little window just behind the terminals. 
At the instant the points begin to open, releasing the feeler stock, the mark on the chamfered tooth of the large distributor gear should be exactly opposite the timing pointer. Here, the marks indicate that the points are opening early. To correct this condition, loosen the two adjusting screws. Then move the stationary point towards the movable point. Tighten the screws and try the check again. Remember that in this type magneto, the breaker points aren't adjusted for any particular clearance of the gap, but only to see that they open at the right time. This time, the markers line up perfectly. A lubrication felt attached to the cam follower supplies a very small quantity of lubricant to the breaker cam. If it's moist, don't add oil. This new felt is dry, so give it a drop or two of oil, but that's all. Don't get any on the breaker points. With the breaker contacts and the magneto adjusted, you can replace the breaker cover temporarily to protect the assembly. Finally, take a look at the terminals to be sure none of them is broken or cracked. It's a good idea to brighten up the contacts with a piece of crocus cloth. This is all there is for you to do on this magneto. When you've gone over the other one in the same way, both will be ready for timing to the engine. Here's the reason ignition timing is so important. You know that in a four-stroke cycle engine, the fuel-air mixture enters the cylinder on a downstroke of the piston. The mixture is compressed on an upstroke of the piston. The spark plugs fire the mixture, and the burning gases drive the piston down again on the power stroke. Then the piston comes up again as the exhaust is driven from the cylinder. You can see how important it is that the sparks be delivered by the spark plugs at exactly the right instant in the four-stroke cycle. And here's an important point. The spark must be delivered slightly before the piston reaches the top of the compression stroke. This is to allow a time interval for the mixture to ignite so the peak of expansion occurs when the piston is at the beginning of the downward stroke. Since the piston drives the crankshaft, this distance before top center at which the plug should fire is measured in degrees of crankshaft rotation. The number of degrees varies with different engines. In this one, it's 30 degrees. Of course, the spark plugs are only the instruments that deliver the sparks to the cylinder. The sparks are manufactured by the magnetos and controlled by the breaker points. For that reason, the breaker points must be timed to open and produce a spark at the exact instant when the piston is the correct distance before the top of its compression stroke. Before installing and timing the magnetos, some preparation is needed. Disconnect the ignition wires and remove the upper spark plugs from the engine to relieve the compression. This makes it easier to turn the crankshaft. Now you can determine the firing position of number one cylinder. A timing tool slipped onto the tapered crankshaft helps you do this. 
The slot in the hub of the tool fits over the key in the shaft, and the tool will only go on one way. The top center mark on the timing tool lines up with the split of the two crankcase halves when the piston is at top dead center. To make sure the piston is on the compression stroke, place your thumb over the number one spark plug hole. Turn the crankshaft in the direction of normal rotation until you're sure you're on the compression stroke. Now check the table of specifications. Notice that the right magneto fires the upper plugs on this engine when the piston is 30 degrees before top center. To set the piston at its firing position, turn the timing tool and crankshaft in the direction of normal rotation until the scale on the disc reads 30 degrees before top center. Number one piston will then be in firing position and you can mount the magneto. Before placing the magneto on the engine, check again to be sure the breaker contacts are at the point where they open. With the two marks lined up, the magneto is adjusted to send a spark to number one cylinder. Now mount the magneto on its studs and run the nuts down finger tight. Exact timing is obtained by turning the magneto in the slots in the magneto flange. Leave the nuts just loose enough so the magneto can be turned. In timing the magneto to the engine, a timing light is most satisfactory to indicate the opening of the points. Clip the ground lead to the engine. Then connect one outside lead from the light to the stationary breaker contact. Snap the switch to turn on the timing light. Now move the magneto on the studs opposite the direction of rotation until the light goes out, indicating that the breaker points have just opened. In this position, the magneto is exactly timed so that the breaker contacts open at the instant that the piston reaches its firing position, 30 degrees before top center. Tighten the magneto hold-down nuts so that the magneto is securely anchored in this correct position. When the nuts have been tightened, Make another check to be sure you didn't disturb the position of the magneto when tightening it in place. To make this check, back off the crankshaft a quarter turn. Then bring it forward slowly until the timing light goes out. If the light goes out at the exact time that the piston is 30 degrees before top center, the magneto is timed to the engine perfectly. Safety the magneto hold down nuts with pal nuts, and you're ready to time the other magneto. The left magneto fires the lower spark plugs and should be timed in exactly the same way. When you have this magneto timed, your final job is to be sure that both magnetos are synchronized. With the light connected to both of them, back off the timing tool and tap it forward. Both lights should go out together when the piston reaches 30 degrees before top center, indicating that the breaker points in both magnetos are opening at the same time. You can now replace the spark plugs that were removed to ease the compression and reconnect the ignition wires to the magnetos and the spark plugs. This completes your work on the magnetos. If no further overhaul is necessary, replace the propeller and the engine is ready for a ground run-up.